Hey, I'm the Boomer Consumer, and I review hi-fi stuff, DAX amps, headphones, speakers, turntables, vintage stuff, too. What if I told you you could get a R2R DAC headphone amplifier, right, that puts out up to 4.4 watts out of its balanced outputs, right, fully balanced outputs on this thing, and pick it up for 400 bucks? You say, Bruce, you're crazy. R2R DACs is super expensive. Not the case with the, well, this thing's a beast. The Hi-Fi Man EF400 right now selling for $399. Now, this is designed to be used with a computer or a device that outputs audio via USB, right? Uh, so, it, yeah, it's not designed to work with your television or if you have a coaxial type connection. It doesn't have those kind of inputs. Strictly USB-C and B. Now, as a disclaimer, this was sent to me for review at no cost by Hi Fire Man. However, all opinions are my own. No one's reviewed the video prior to posting. Yes, there's a lot of headphone amp stack combinations out there from Topping SML, SMSL, uh, a whole bunch of other companies. But I think to get this level of quality for 400 bucks, you got to give this thing a real consideration. I truly think this is something special and worth doing a review. And yes, there are a lot of reviews out already on this. But given the price and what this thing can do, is certainly worth it in my opinion. Now let's take a look at it right now. Now before we start the review, I just want to go over the unboxing experience. Hi-Fi Man products are kind of an understated affair because they put their money into the product. And... This is no different. And when you open the box, the first thing you're going to see is a little box that has your power cord. And once you take that out, then you get to the Hi-Fi Man EF400. Comes in a nice white little cloth to protect the finish. And I got to tell you, my first impression was this is a hefty little headphone DAC uh, or a headphone amp and DAC, right? It's real hefty, nice aluminum construction on here. And the, I think part of the heft is obviously due to the large toroidal transformer that's built in. All in all, I thought it was a very nice looking unit. It's just very nice looking right off the bat. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the specs of the EF400. And that is, it's the, of course, a resistor ladder DAC. It uses hi fi man's Himalaya design with a FPGA circuit on here. Rated at up to 24 bits, 768 kilohertz for PCM. Uh, no DSD that I'm aware of or MQA, so those uh, it won't handle. Channel separation, 125 dB. Now let's talk about power output. Hi Fi Man claims that it will hit 4.4 watts out of the balanced outputs on here. However, they did not disclose what the impedance of the headphones for matching purposes, what that was. Now, I read somewhere that is, somebody had measured that it got 3.3 watts at 32 ohms impedance. So the 4.4 watts, I really don't have an answer for on that. Of course, it comes with an oxygen-free uh, copper in the toroidal transformer. The signal noise ratio is 118 dB. And for more specs, I have... Uh, Links in the description down below if you want to get into more detail about the design and build and specifications of the EF400. So what's on the front? Well, the first thing is, is your, I don't want to use the word filters, but you have the options for different gain settings on there. So the first one is your high gain with no oversampling, then high gain with oversampling, low gain with oversampling, and then low gain no oversampling. Now, I have read a few people say that if they were listening to FLAC files being streamed through the DAC uh, using like a mobile device or whatever, they might hear some crackling or popping. And I tested this with an iPad and an iPhone both connected to the DAC. And I that was not my experience at all. So that may have been an issue in the past units, but it certainly did not present itself in the EF400. Now, Going further, you have a 6.35 millimeter connection for your headphones, a 3.5 millimeter, a 4.4 balance output, and then an XLR 
output as well. And then finally, you have your volume control. And that's, the, the knob feel is actually quite good. I think these might be plastic, but they still have a very nice feel to it. They're, this does not have any stops on it. It's just a smooth actuation on here. Whereas the input selector can hear click, click, click through the various gain settings on here. That's all there is to the front. That's one of the things I like about this. It's very simple to use. Now, my personal preference on the uh, gain settings was actually low with no oversampling. And at no point did I have to move this volume control past about 10 or 11 in order to get really good volume out of my headphones, which I was testing with the Aria Organics. And that's going to be a review coming up in the very, very near future. Now, taking a look at the rear, you have your right and left balanced outputs. You have a pair of single-ended RCA outputs. That's the outputs on the back. And then you have a USB Type-C input, USB Type-B input, your IEC power connection, off and on switch. That's it. Uh, I do wish that it came with, let's say, SPDIF, such as coax and optical, but it doesn't. There you have it. This is designed really, I think, to be used with the computer mostly in mind or any device that may have a USB output. So I just wanted to share with you some of my initial impressions all in all. First, I have to say I really like the high quality build of this unit. It's nice and metal, nice, nice aluminum uh, plate on here. It's hefty of a little over, oh, just under seven pounds, let's say. I really like the build quality. I like the simple operation. More or less, plug in your USB source, select your gain setting, plug in your headphones, and you are good to go. I also like the fact that it has an internal power supply, so there's no big power brick that you have to contend with. I did not like the lack of inputs on this unit. The, the fact that there's no spit if there's no coaxial input, no optical input. I think in the uh, the old price of $600, it should have those. Now it's on sale for $399. I don't know how long that will last, but there you have it. The lack of uh, DSD or MQA decoding, that, that it's strictly uh, PCM. Now, again, if it can do DSD, I could not find anything on the uh, Hi-Fi Man website that says that it can do that. Now, as far as testing I tested with the Alienware laptop using Plexiamp, also with an iPad Pro. Software was Apple Music Lossless uh, and also ALAC ripped CDs and the Hi-Fi Man area uh, or organic headphones. And that's what I use for testing purposes. Now, as far as music collection, I happen to be a big Donald Bird fan and Blackbird is just kind of a jazz fusion uh, CD. And I got to tell you, I thought that the separation was just absolutely amazing on uh, the imaging on this DAC amp combination. Uh, the highs were clean and tight. Vocals just had a nice sound to them. There is a bit of warmth. Some people say that R to R DACs are more tube-like in sound. I can tell you, I thought it sounded a bit more analog than, say, my topping DACs or the SML DACs that I have used. So there is a bit more warmth to this, but it does not affect the texture or the tonality of the music. In fact, I think it's quite dynamic and is quite punchy, but there is a bit of warmth, but not, not anything that would turn, turn you off on that. The track... Mr. Thomas was just super excellent for tasting or tasting <laughs> for testing bass on here. So the bass, by the way, was very tight, very fast, very punchy, not muddy at all. Speaking of bass, the next uh, CD that I listened to was Amy Winehouse's Frank. What a wonderful album. If you've not heard it, um, you, you got to experience it, all right? So the track stronger than me, man, it will put the bass through its paces. Now, uh, I was using planar magnetic headphones and one of the complaints some people have about those, they don't quite do the, the 
bass as much as a, say, a dynamic driver headphone. Well, I'm here to tell you, this had real punch, real kick to it. Just sounded so amazing. Uh, very dynamic track, by the way. So it really put the headphones, it really put the DAC and the amp through its paces. Now, Amy's voice was crisp, it was concise. But as I said earlier, there's just a touch of warmth that I think that the r r DAC adds. Imaging was totally on point on this CD. Another album that uh, I use for testing is Donald Fagan's The Nightfly. And uh, he was one of the founders of Steely Dan. And what an amazing album. If you've not had a chance to hear it, definitely check it out. The track Green, uh, Green Flower. Very detailed, very dynamic. This has a lot of texture to it, maybe more so than, say, my, uh, was it the uh, Topping DX3 Pro? Uh, just a lot more texture to it, and I think, again, that could be attributed to the r to r DAC design. Treble did seem a bit bright, but not fatiguing or tiring to listen to. And that is just some of the music that I use to test this DAC with. So I think this gives you more of that analog sound and doesn't have necessarily the digital sheen that some uh, Delta Sigma uh, DAX has. And I also think that it's extremely well made. You can drive just about any headphones that you throw at it. I like the sheer simplicity. This is more plug and play. You don't have a ton of filters to mess around with or weird ways to putting it to different modes. None of that, right? Given its $399 price tag, I do wish it had a kind of an indicator on there that showed you perhaps the bit rate or frequency that it's operating at, but apparently you don't need that. i find man doesn't think you need that at all. And I think that if it were to have spit of inputs, that would be great going forward. But as it is, I think this is a really tough unit to beat price-wise. So in my opinion, this is definitely a combination DAC amp, especially if you're looking to get into that world of R to R, then this should be on your short list. And I'm Bruce Naylor, your Boomer Consumer. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.